Hi guys, it's Summers here. Welcome to my analysis of McLaren's 2019 Challenger, the Papier Orange and Vega Blue MCL34. Shooting from the hip, you'd have to say that the MCL34 looks like a step forward, with all the square edges that troubled them last season knocked off and thoroughly refined. But as always, let's start at the front and work our way back, dissecting the tech as we go. There are two front wing specs in the wild, with the one shown in the renders a little different to the ones on the physical launch car. For this video, we'll look at the physical pictures, as I suspect they'll be closer to what we actually see when they rock up at testing on Monday. The wing is similar to some of the other solutions that we've already seen, but also very different in other respects. One of the similarities lies in the shape of the main plane, which is upturned in the outer section to encourage flow beneath it, driving performance through the twin strakes and energising the inner footplate, which itself is deliberately exposed due to the upturned main plane. The end plate follows the formula set out in the regulations, with a small kick out towards the rear to encourage outwash, whilst the foot plate is similar in design to what you'd ordinarily expect. The outboard section of the flaps are where the wing differs from what we've already seen, as they bend over to complement the outturned end plate. The nose carries the DNA of the complicated design introduced at the Spanish Grand Prix last season, and then was subsequently altered in the latter stages at the Russian Grand Prix. It continues to feature the tri inlet snout that tries to make the bodywork disappear from an aerodynamic perspective, whilst a Narca style duct has been added to the front wing pylons, empowering the revised cape behind. The front brake ducts are the most complicated we've seen so far, stretching down the front wheel in order to collect as much airflow as possible, cooling the brakes and also pushing airflow through the wheel rim. They join Mercedes in their use of the front suspension upright extension, which raises the upper wishbone and allows cleaner flow to specific areas of the side pods and barge boards behind. Talking of the barge boards, this area of the car has seen some serious attention, with the usual surfaces divided up and displaced to improve through flow. Meanwhile, an interesting step-like weight disruptor has also been added, a solution I suspect the other teams will be monitoring as well. The side pods are almost a halfway house solution, with the side impact spars slung low whilst the inlet still remains a little larger than the letterbox solution used elsewhere. On top of the side pod surface we can see they've opted to use a similar winglet to Red Bull last year and Renault this. This overhangs the side pod itself and will create a streamwise vortex that will help with flow downstream. The side pods are a little bulkier as they flow back down the car than you'd expect, but based on McLaren's issues with the power unit and its cooling parameters in 2018, you can forgive them for relaxing things a little. In any case, it's not like they can't alter some of the bodywork at a later point, if they can manage to get on top of the cooling parameters and want to chase a little more aero efficiency. The airbox inlet, which was too small in 2018, has been rectified for this year, switching to the larger Ulva style inlet that we see elsewhere on the grid. The engine cover behind it is much more like the ones we used to see in the pre-hybrid era, without the full shark fin. However, there is still a mini fin midway down the engine cover spine, which also features the driver's numbers. The rear wing is supported by two swan neck style pillars, with the central portion of the main plane drooped down to produce more downforce, whilst the outboard sections are extruded upward to meet the end plate in an attempt to reduce drag. The end plates continue to feature the multiple strikes on the edge of the bounding box in the transition region to maximise the wing's output, and it's actually a design that they pioneered and has subsequently been copied by most of the field. The rear wheels are finned on their face in the same way the Mercedes ones were from the Belgian Grand Prix last season. However, it's unclear if they've copied the entire system Mercedes used last year at this stage, but it is likely, just as I suspect most of the field will be working on something similar in order to help manage rear tyre temperatures. 